Welcome to the Miniatures Paintbrush and welcome to Reviews. What's up Miniatures Paintbrush Legion and welcome back to the Miniatures Paintbrush. Here we have the new episode of reviews where we review Maddox magazine articles, games, all kinds of things that we go over and give our impressions of, our first impressions of. So if you're ever thinking about buying these things, you'll have a heads up of what's going on within the community. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to review this little zine called Snarl. Rawr. Uh, <laughs> and they have a featured game in here. It's like a little mini game. And it is the first issue. Um, and the mini game is called Tanks for the Apocalypse, which is pretty good. Uh, it's the official magazine of Snarling Badger's Studio. Snar Snarling Badger's Studio. I got that right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and that is a company made by both Vincent Ventruella and Uncle Adam from the miniature wargaming community. They have awesome channels. You can pick up this zine at the Wargamers Vault, and I'll have a link in the description so you can just check that out. Uh, the magazine is $8, so it's pretty cheap to have a game that you're ready to play. Um, and they're talking about tanks for the apocalypse is one of the features that they have here, a full mini game right there. Um, pretty good. I love the illustration that they have, and I love the format of the magazine itself. But let's talk about the game itself. I'm going to introduce this by saying that it's a game where they had Sherman tanks, although I'm going to use different tanks when I play it. They have uh, Sherman tanks, and um, they were some kind of post-apocalyptic kind of world here uh, down in the Midwest. And, um, well, some of the people took tanks. And if you didn't take a tank and commission a tank yourself, and too bad for you. Uh, but this, like, survival of the tankiest? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it's pretty cool over here. Um, and the format, what you need to play is very little. Um, what did you think about this game overall before I get into continuing? So, like you said, you don't need a lot to get started. And I think as someone who is pretty new to wargaming and minis, that's uh, very nice because you don't need hundreds of dollars just to play one game. Yeah. You can take, um, it's 10 six-sided dice, and then each player is going to need one tank or one you know, armored vehicle of some type. Um, and like you said, I think you could repurpose things from other games. Um, it doesn't even have to be World War II Sherman tanks. That's the scenario that the uh, game designer has created, but you could certainly adapt it to any world because basically it's just tank on tank action oh yeah tank on tank action that sounds really great mm -hmm. so there's definitely a lot of similarities to malifaux it seems like oh what do you the, think there? well you have um you know armies that are or small not small uh, like not even armies like small bands that are battling each other um and then you have secondary objectives but a difference with this game is that the primary objective is to simply murder the other tanks. Um, the secondary objectives only get you half the number of points that destroying an enemy tank gets you. So for the murder hobos out there, oh, this there it is, is the game. <laughs> oh, you're reminding I me think, of some D&D sessions. There. I think that for me, this game would probably be... Maybe a little more enjoyable because it, it seems a little bit, um, I don't want to say silly, but a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit less, um, might, you could play it faster maybe rather than so much time that you need to strategize in playing Malifaux or Warhammer. Um, it seems like maybe a good party game would be easier to pick up because um, the rules are a lot less complicated and there's definitely some cool things you can do with your characters. Um, you, your character is a tank, so it doesn't really have, uh, you know, personality or, or backstory I, no, per se, sure. but it has damage. It has, tank. yeah, there's somebody <laughs> in it, but when you're playing though, the, it, you don't have a humanoid or, you know, monstrous mini, it's just a tank. Right. So your tank starts out already damaged, 
um, because it's already seen so much. Uh, yeah. And you have to roll to find out what's going to be wrong with your tank. And that's before um, you've even begun. That's before you've even begun. That's pretty cool. That's before there's any damage from the gameplay. Just a character. Yeah. And something that I thought was interesting was the actions that the tank can do. The, of course, it can move. Um, it can shoot. But it can also create a smoke puff. Uh, to help kind of disguise itself. That's right. Uh, you can floor it, uh, which is just you use all your your action dice to go really fast. Um, and then you can also ram into another player. Oh, I like that. So it's kind of like bumper cars almost. But, of course, if you ram into another tank, it's going to damage your tank as well. Of course, yeah. So that's, again, I feel like it's a lot more lighthearted. Um than some of the other war games that you've played so far. that I've played so far. Right. Yeah. Right. We still have to get you on um, Warhammer 40 K and AOS. It's only like, I mean, if you play really fast about four hours, usually it takes me about eight. All right. In any case. <laughs> so yeah, that's great. So pop and smoke. Pop yeah. Smoke. All right, isn't that a yeah? That a rap it's artist? actually called no. It's actually called Pop Smoke. That's mm. the that's great. That's the name of the move. And something else that is good is if you've been following along with uh, miniatures paintbrush uh, terrain tutorials, this game will let you uh, have use. a place to use all that terrain. Um, you do need terrain that's a little bigger. It advises that three by like three inches by three inches is the ideal size. Uh, you need you can have all sorts of terrain objects, but you need several of those to serve as cover, yeah, um, or to complicate movement. And I do have so much terrain, mm -hmm. so much. But and the fun thing about that is the more terrain you have, the more different types of scenarios or worlds that you could play this in. And you don't need a game board. Uh, all you need is just I believe it's a three by three foot by three foot area. Yeah, so you can play it again. It, this is, would be a good game for parties. Because you really don't need that much. And you can play up to six players, right? Was it about something like that? I don't remember. It's, it is multiplayer. But it's you multiplayer. can it can be two players, though, because it's oh, yeah. really just tank on tank. Yeah. But it's it's definitely something that you could play with a group as well. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. I really like the post-game process because you can literally level up your uh, tank. You can repair your damage. Mm -hmm. um, you can upgrade. And that's what I really like there. Uh, that you have unique things that every time you play the game, you have something a little different to bring to the table. So you can play multiple games in like a series mm -hmm. and then really have some things uh, going on in there. So, yeah, that's a great game. Um, so you're down to play this one? Definitely. All right. Awesome. So there's going to be some more content where we're playing the game Tanks for the Apocalypse. I should say the mini or the micro game. Tanks for the Apocalypse. Now, this zine also has information on the game Rain in Hell, right? Okay, so there it is, and it's called The Reckoning. They have a new cabal, so those of you who do play Rain in Hell, you have something else to bring in, uh, some other warband to bring in and to paint up. You know, I like that. Um, it's called The Faithful. All right, and they're more ritualistic, and they have their own different beliefs and honor values and stuff like that that they bring to the table. So if you're playing the Cabals and you're like, hey, I want a fresh change, you have a brand new Cabal to play with, uh, and new scenarios as well. They actually have some scenarios. Let me get that into light, right? So you can see this one over here, right? It's not really panning well. All right, so you have two new scenarios getting played in there with special rules. Um, so that could be really good. Different victory conditions and everything else, which is absolutely great. Again, um, extending your rain and hell experience, which is a lot of fun. And if you've been keeping uh, tabs on rain and hell, I really enjoy the game. I think it's really simple uh, to play. So, and it's pretty straightforward to play. Would it's, you say that it's as easy to start as Tanks for the Apocalypse? Um, somewhere in between. Okay. Tanks of the Apocalypse, actually Tanks of the Apocalypse is really, it reminds me of Right in Hell because of it also has upgrades as well, mm -hmm. um, doing that. And you're using multiple dice, but you're using like one kind. So instead of using a D6, you're using D8s. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the turn activation because what you do with the Rain in Hell is that you roll a bunch of dice and you go in order of who has the highest numbers. 
Okay. And you go and I go, or I can go twice some turns, I can go three times some turns, and then you get all the ending turns, or you can go all as much and so you know it just goes to the highest dice, and then you keep on doing the activations like that. So it's really interesting to do that. And I really, really wish that um <clears throat> game workshop adopted something like that instead of having see <clears throat> for AOS and for uh Warhammer 40k, like let's say it's your turn. You have to move everybody, do all your magic, do all your command mm -hmm. abilities, do everything, kill the people you're going to kill and everything. And I'm just watching it. Yeah. That's it. That's that I'm watching and going. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some counter moves I can do, but not really that many. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. So this way, and now there's more counter moves in the newest edition. I haven't mm -hmm. played yet, which I really love to. Um, but they're new. Um, so I really wish that they would do turn activation like that. Like I'll move one group of people and you move. So it's more interactive instead yeah. of just waiting. Like you're waiting mm -hmm. for like an hour to play a game. It's just, eh. all right. And there is, again, there is some, you moved into me, you attack me and I get mm -hmm. to attack you back yeah. thing. But keep in mind, if you're attacking first, I have less people to attack with. Yeah. So you have the advantage. Well, it's, not, yeah. it's just faster paced too, or it feels yes. faster paced at least because you're not just having that time where you're waiting. I think that would definitely be a boon if they would adapt a different kind of activation system in Warhammer 40k and uh, Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great, which I play both. I have fun. I had a lot of fun in Nova Open this year when I get to play, and, and you were there, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to play AOS in a huge narrative campaign, which, oh my gosh, if you haven't tried, it's like so beautiful, like that battle was at the like end. like 20 people playing, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lot of people playing. It, I don't even know how many, but uh, we were all playing in one board. Like, it was a big siege that took the entire length of all the people playing. It was just so much fun. There's so much to it. So, yeah, definitely. So, uh, the last part of this zine is Space Station Zero content. Uh, and then uh, I haven't played Space Station Zero, and you haven't either, have no. you? No. No. Um, so, over here where they have some scientific gear and stuff like that, it seems like a fun kind of futuristic uh, living on a space station and killing baddies kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cute. I, I mean, that's all I can think of. I think it's like really cute. It's mm -hmm. like, I can picture like this little astronaut. There is this miniature of this little tiny astronaut just pulling into space. And then a lot of people, um, painted the variations of that, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. I could picture a little, little tiny astronaut just going, hey, hey. going through the space station zero with a big yeah. gun. That's, Big plasma, whatever, futuristic laser. Like, I have an overactive imagination, though. That's just me. Some people say that's creative. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the last part over there. Uh, of course, the gratuitous have some merch over here. And Majestic Games, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's Majestic13Games.com. Uh, that is... Or Majestic Games. I've never played any of Majestic Games. It might be something I'll be looking into too. Because I do like to have fun. All right. I think that's it for this. Do you have anything else to add? Some closing no. thoughts? Yeah. Uh, well, I definitely will be checking out Tanks for the Apocalypse. And thank you for having me on the show. Sure thing. Thanks for being on the show. Well, like I say at the end of every video, make sure you paint every miniature to increase one skill. Got to level up. And may your backlog Get ever small. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.